Let's talk about circuit analysis. We're going to have electrons leading one side of a battery and returning to the other. It must be an unbroken path with continuous, for after continuous current flow. We're going to leave the negative side of the battery, which has an excess of electrons, have electrons travel through the load to the positive side of the battery where there's a lack of electrons. The function of a battery is to create a potential difference from the negative to the positive terminal that will allow us to have current flow. We can do the same thing with an alternator. When we have polarity, particularly on a battery, it's very important. Current flow or electrons leave the black side of the top battery and go around the circuit and return to the positive side, the copper top. What's wrong at the bottom? We have two batteries fighting each other. There is potential difference in voltage at the top. There is no potential difference in voltage at the bottom. They are the same. They're fighting each other. When we talk about this, negative and positives, it's very important. Remember, batteries use ion movement to store excess electrons on the negative plate and deplete the electrons on the positive side. That's what its function is. Now, when we get to automotive circuits, we're going to go back a little later and we're going to spend more time talking about the basics. But let's make sure you understand that automotive circuits are going to be part of the entire vehicle because, for one thing, we use the vehicle chassis as a ground, as a return conductor. It's going to act as part of the circuit. With only one battery and one alternator in most cases, the whole vehicle becomes part of the overall system. And in many circuits, we can have problems where a problem in one circuit can affect another circuit. But this is not true of all circuits. We have to look at a vehicle-specific diagram that shows us which circuits are affected by a problem. This is going to prove to be more complicated than you think it is. But if you study the details and understand the system operation, you will find you can make a lot of determinations of where a possible problem is before you pick up a voltmeter. That's our objective here. Yes, everyone showed you these simple circuits. We're going to have this battery that creates an excess electrons on one side, a depletion of electrons on the other, and sends current flow through a load. So we're going to need a voltage source, a potential difference, an alternator, a battery, or some other device to generate a source of voltage. We're going to have resistance, which is the load or the device, and we're going to have current flow. We actually do the work. Now here's a typical automotive circuit. There's a whole bunch of stuff above this that we're going to ignore for now. But if we take that one plus there at that splice and analyze this one circuit, we're going to supply voltage to a load that's going to have current flow from the ground to this positive. It's going to power up the load on the right. And, of course, it'll be powering up the load on the left, too. But let's talk about these. We have a shared B-plus supply between two loads. Shared means if one has a problem, the other should have a problem. This is our first principle we're talking about. Both loads share the same problem. If either load works, it must mean that that shared supply is good. In the other case, chassis ground isn't really shared. It goes back to battery negative. It's using the vehicle to share it. So it is also a shared circuit, but at a much larger potential. If we had a bad connection to battery negative, for instance, neither lamp would light. It's just as bad as having a bad connection to B plus through a fuse or anything else. It doesn't matter which end has added resistance. The plus side or the minus side, it will have the same impact. Now, automotive circuits have two paths for current flow. We have our example here where it went down one path. Here's the other. Full source voltage is applied to each load if it's available. And both of them are going to use chassis ground to get back to battery negative which require a good connection to battery negative for both circuits to work. So we're going to analyze this in more detail. Here we have split current. Both have the same voltage. Here's two light bulbs. It's called a series circuit. They're connected in series. We have electrons leaving the negative side of the battery, going through that heavy green line at the bottom, which is vehicle chassis ground, and then going through the load and returning to the positive side of the battery. When we do this, each time we go through a load, we're going to drop voltage. This is called a voltage drop. Here's an example. In this circuit, we're really looking for how many voltage drops. We have B-plus applied to the top, and we have ground at the bottom. 
if the relay is making good contact, the only voltage drop in this circuit that's appreciable should be across the horn. Let me say that one more time. We're looking for one main voltage drop. If we've got 14 volts, we expect to see volt 14 volts apply to the horn. If we can't make good contact with vehicle ground, we'll have something other than zero, which will take away voltage available to the load. Let me say that one more time. If there's something wrong in ground, it will reduce the voltage available to the load because the voltage available to the load is the difference between the red and the blue arrows. What is the difference in potential? If we have a problem with the relay not making good contact or a fuse being blown or any kind of resistance in a splice, we're going to reduce the voltage available at the top. And we'll see that with a voltmeter reference to ground. But remember, the real case is what voltage is difference. But what's the voltage difference between the top and the bottom of the device we're looking at? We have to have good ground. We have to have good B+. They are equally important. Now, we're going to talk more about relays later. But control circuits are used to determine available voltage. We don't apply voltage to the horn all the time. We only apply it when we want the horn to blow. So we'll talk more about that later. But the voltage drops really occur when there is current flow. It can be in the grounds. It can be in the power side. Current flow either in grounds or power side will subtract from the voltage available across the device we're looking at. We should have B plus up here. Must be good voltage because without good B plus, the device can't operate normally. Now we're going to talk more about this later and we'll use it for advanced diagnostics because there's a lot going on here, more than you see, and we can do some real detailed diagnostics by looking at the performance of this overall circuit and studying it more carefully and deeper and determining what might be a problem before we ever pick up a voltmeter. We're going to talk more about control circuits and relays because one of the things we've got to get to before we can talk about circuits in detail is how do we turn power or ground off and onto the circuit. We can disable a circuit by removing the ground or removing B+. Both systems are effective, and either one can be used at any time.